Cool. All right. So I guess I am finally live then. Um, hello, everybody. So I'm doing something just a wee bit different today, and uh, I am coming at you all basically uh, choreographing the combo for May, um, which normally I do uh, privately, but I figured today what the hell. Um, I've been looking for an excuse to do a live stream, and I was trying to figure out what to do live stream on. And I'm like, hey, some people may enjoy watching the process of me... Uh, of, of me creating choreography, right? So, I'm also going to take this as an opportunity to do a little bit of a Q&A for anybody who is tuning in out there, which um, it looks like is currently nobody. Oh, never mind, it's two people now. Um, yeah, so uh, I first want to open this up by uh, asking those of you who are watching to um, go ahead and vote in the chat here. It, what, like, kind of, would you like to see beginner, intermediate, or advanced uh, combo coming out in May? Which it'll be, it'll be two weeks before that video comes out. But uh, you guys get to have a front row seat for it being written. Yeah. Uh, Hamazrel Cactus says, "Hello from Czech Republic again." Eh, Dobry den, or is it uh, Dobry Nuts at this point? Uh, how late is it though? Oh, yeah, it's totally double notes at this point. Cool. So, yeah. Opening question, guys. Should it be a beginner, intermediate, or advanced combo? Um, I think I've done beginner combos for the last two months, but I'm happy to do a beginner combo again. Uh, or intermediate or advanced, if that's what you guys are looking for. But uh, please, uh, throw me your uh, votes in the chat function, if you would. Um, yeah, and if you need to have just like a little prompt, just say, I vote, and then beginner, intermediate, or advanced, and uh, tally up the votes over the course of the next couple minutes here, and that will be where I will start. In the meantime, I'm going to uh, throw on some music to help me get in the, uh, the, the poi movement mode here. So yeah, send me, the, send me those votes, send me those votes. Beginner, intermediate, advanced. What, what level combo you want this to be? Let me know, please. Cool. So all the music today is going to be taken out of the YouTube copyright free library uh, so that I don't have to worry about any of that stuff. Uh, Jalen Ginn says, intermediate. Cool. We got one vote for an intermediate combo. Uh, Hammerswell Cactus says, can you double staff spin? Yes, I can. I would like, huh, I've never done a double staff combo, but I think for this month I want to keep it a poi combo. Uh, but maybe a double staff combo would be really interesting for next month. Yeah. Cool. So I want to hear from at least two more people. You want to see me write a beginner, intermediate, or advanced combo this month? Please let me know in the chat function. Thank you. Please, please, and thank you. Um, also, let me know where y'all are from. Uh, I know that we've got at least one person on here who is from the Czech Republic. Uh, are most of you, you guys out there watching from uh, the other side of the pond in Europe and the like? Igro IP says, hi Drex. Hi Igro IP. Come on, come on. Beginner, intermediate, advanced. This is your opportunity to uh, have a voice in. Hello. Hello, kitty. Um, this is your opportunity to have a say in what goes on my channel here. Igro IP is from Ukraine. Awesome. Peregrine Church says, second vote for intermediate from Seattle. Fantastic. It's looking like uh, the internet is favoring the intermediate combos here. Cool. I want. I don't know why I'm asking for it, but let's say let's say two more votes. Two more votes for uh, should May's combo be begin be beginner, intermediate, or advanced. Let me know. Let me know. 
beginner, intermediate, advanced. And where are you guys all watching from? Yeah? Igoroy P says intermediate as well. Uh, Jalen Jen says, tuning in from the States, jealous of your prop shelf. Thanks. I actually, um, we're getting to a point where I think we need to start getting rid of some props because it's getting so packed that there are props that have not come off of that wall in the better part of months and props that we use almost every day that, uh, uh, that don't have room up there. So I think we need to shuffle some things around. Hammers Real Cactus says, intermediate. Awesome. It looks like May is going to be an intermediate combo. Thanks for voting, everybody. So, um, David Spodril says, Hi from the Czech Republic. Dobry, dobry nuts, because it's night there. Yes. Uh, cool. All right. Intermediate combo. Here we go. So, I've gotten myself a little bit into trouble the past couple months by... Um, putting together combos that people thought were um, more advanced than uh, were really appropriate for beginners. So, some here. I've also done a lot of combos in the past two months that were centered around specific ideas, like, for example, uh, combos where you used a single point of transition for multiple tricks. Um, and also the idea of uh, kind of using the same timing and direction in different spots around the body, like, you know, going back and forth between these styles and tricks right here. Um, so I guess just for an intermediate combo, the, the right answer might be to just go balls out and come up with a really cool way of getting between different tricks, yeah? Um, so, just so you guys know, one of the criteria that I use when I'm developing a combo, when I think of it as being beginner, intermediate, advanced, etc., is I think about what I knew how to do after, say, like a year of spinning, or two to three years of spinning, or like, you know, three plus years of spinning. Um, and it's not always the best measure because some things haven't been invented yet. Um, and the other issue that you run into there is that, you know, sometimes I was able to do things after a couple of years, like horizontal cat eye versus isolation, that were very, very unusual at the time, and that are still so difficult that they're very, very few people that can do them. So, I know it's a cliche, but I've been really loving the body tracers of late. I think that they're really fun. Um, Yeah. So I think I want to stay on that train. I think I want to. I think I want to keep some body tracers in here. But I've been doing the archer we've done with that lately. Um, perhaps starting off with Metasol's body tracer might be a better might be a better idea. Uh, the other rule, of course, that I have to work with is that all of these moves have to be moves that I've done one minute tutorials on. Um, so I'm trying to think. So, air wraps and hyperloops will have one minute tutorials on. Um, that would be interesting. Find the installation. Ah, okay, so I like that. Starting off with an isolation and then doing the kind of linear isolations that go here. And the trick here is that, um, so I can't do that body tracer when the poi are top bottom. It has to be when they're outside side. But yeah, then I can totally do that. Um, so the other rule that's really important for writing this choreo is that it can't involve any more than six tricks. Um, or six tricks plus something that I can easily teach over the course of like less than a minute. Yeah? So I think, at least for a start, I'm happy with having that isolation to the linear isolations, and then boom, into the body tracer. I don't want to put something fancy in there, too, though. Let me check in and see what you guys are, are, are saying up in here. Uh, Ixel No Name says, greetings from Poland. Hello. Uh, Hammers Rule Cactus says, my English is not good. Seems great to me. 
And Igro IP says, sorry for my English. Um, I mean, I, I, I don't speak uh, any Ukrainian or Russian, so I apologize for my crappy Ukrainian and Russian. I do speak a little bit of Czech, so I'm, I'm trying to throw that in there where I can. Um, and if I don't completely butcher this, uh, thank you all for, for, for watching. Um, Ixel No Name says, yeah, yeah, your spinning is so smooth. Why, thank you so much. Cool. Um, do the dance this up some. So, got my isolation here. Boom, boom. That's kind of cheesy. Um, boom, boom, boom. I don't know about that. I could always do the like picking up. Picking up from um, uh, a coupe up to passe and then using that to set up something in uh, second or something like that. So let's see what I Yeah, I like that. Um, and then I'm tempted to do a uh, uh, a a, 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 a torjete there. Uh, which, why not? I mean, this is my combo. I get to do it at a little more, too, right? So, isolation, coupe up to passe, boom. Isolation, coupe up to passe, and boom, boom, boom. Just going to go up and around. Okay, we'll just pretend that I jumped off of that. It makes me want to stall out here. So that takes us to a place where I've got the isolation, never soul body tracing hybrid. Hi there, Dean. This is Theo at my feet right here. Theo likes to uh, Theo likes to just back me when trying to get work done. Yeah. Theo's a very cute instruction. Boom. Up. Look at what I did it the first time. Now I can't remember what it was. So from here, I have my boom, 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 and round. That'll work. Torchete, up and around. And I'm tempted to turn that into a stall chaser, even though like that feels like such a cliche at that point. Um Option number two, okay, so I've got this up, would be to do another stall and take it into a snake. Here. I'm kind of sure what, I'm not sure what I want to do just yet. Let me check and see what you guys are, are saying out there. Um, smooth, it is extremely satisfying. Thanks, that's good to hear. Uh, Igro IP says, watch a lot of your videos and you really inspire me to learn poise spinning, but after almost a year of trying, I still can't do air wraps. Do you have extra hints for that trick? Um, yes. So the biggest thing I can tell you about air wraps is that, so this is kind of what it looks like looking down on air wraps from above. And do you see how my two poi are kind of at an angle from each other? Um, to do the air wrap, you basically have to fold that angle back in towards you. So you want the poi to kind of meet at an angle like this, away from your body. And as they touch each other, you want to fold them back in between your arms such that you reverse the angle, right? If you can do that, if you get, say, like the right hand point and the left hand point up in between your arms and switch the angle uh, that they're kind of meeting at to this, they come undone automatically. Like, so, um, and this isn't terribly intuitive because, like, I had a really, really hard time learning this, honestly. Um, what I'd recommend is bearing that in mind and also bearing in mind that what you need to have happen is that, so, like, as I'm doing this clockwise relative to me, um, my left hand poi goes, like, essentially below the point at which the poi meet at and comes up in between my arms, 
So think that left goes under, right goes under, left goes under, right goes under, left goes under, right goes under, and it should automatically come back apart. Um, I have a one minute tutorial on that, so you can go check that out if you want to see that working in slow mo. Yeah. Uh, Excel No Name says, I'm actually smiling like an idiot hearing you saying my name, Nick, oh, Nick name. Uh, you're inspiring me and I'm learning from your videos, so it feels like an honor. Cool. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Jalen Jen says, I love Theo. He's doing great. Maybe half a stall chaser into snakes. Yeah, that's, that's kind of what I'm leaning towards as well. Uh, Hammond's Real Cactus says, you going to visit Polnavi Plamina? Um, not this year. Uh, I was very, very lucky that, um, that uh, Pyroterra was able to fly me out and, uh, you know, had me take part in last year, um, my girlfriend came with me and we had an absolutely amazing time. Um, it was really great because actually I lived in the Czech Republic back in 2004 and going back there really felt like coming home in a lot of respects because, you know, I got the language back in me and um, I just love the way the country feels. Uh, it's very, it's very timeless in a lot of ways and I really enjoy that. I, I love all the old buildings. I love the architecture. Um, but, uh, unfortunately, it, I, I don't know if they brought in somebody else this year or what the deal there is, but, uh, it, I, I never got the call about it this year. Um, and it's an awesome festival. I absolutely recommend you go out and check it out. I thought it was fantastic. And I hope I get a chance to come back there, uh, sometime in the future. Maybe, maybe on my own dime. We'll see. Um, JJ Spinner says, Podpoy versus a drop poi witch one. What? Which one is better? Podpoi versus a drop. I don't know what a drop is. Um, I I use Podpoi in all my videos pretty much, so I'm 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 definitely team Podpoi. Um, cool. So I'm gonna go back to spinning that. Um, oh, James Glory says greetings from Atlanta, Georgia. Huge sycophant here. Oh dear. Um, huge inspiration to keep spinning. Thanks. I still have trouble with the five beat weave. We'll watch more of your tutorials. Awesome. Uh, do I know when Podpoy version two comes out? Yes, it comes out in two weeks. This was actually just confirmed to me earlier this week, which I'm excited about and I hope you guys are too. Um, Bigger IP says, thanks a lot. It must be difficult to me to do the chains because I am training with Firepoy. Yeah. I mean, it's just kind of how it goes though. Um, you know, I, I think that, um, Technora has been a great benefit to the poi world, but it does come with some disadvantages. Um, doing tangles is one of them. Um, you know, you, you would think that doing tangles with Technora would feel a lot like doing tangles with like normal ropes, but you find especially when you're doing things like orbitals that um, all of a the sudden there's not a natural point for the poi to catch on, and so it can make orbitals uh, a lot more difficult. So. All right, so let's let, let's let's review where I am right now in this in this combo. So I started off with my isolations, going between coupe up to passe, and boom, 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 up and around out. I have my tour jeté. I come out. Do I want to do small chase here? I really don't. But it would look cool. And then snake. To pirouette. What would that look like? So I have my snake. Boom, boom. And if you go back into the metasol from there. Okay, how many tricks am I up to at this point? I have got, got isolations. I have linear isolations. I have the Nevisol. Um, I'm not going to count the Torge because this is really just a weed. Um, I have either stalls or stall, trace, or stall chasers. I didn't even count these off, sorry. So, isolations is one. Linear isos is two. The Nevisol is three. I'm not counting the Torge Stalls are four, stall chasers would be five, snakes, and rounds, 
And then I want to go back into the middle story, yeah? It is so hot, oh my god. But, so like DC basically skipped spring, and it's 80 degrees out right now. Last week it was like still in the 50s, which is crazy to me. Um, all right, so let me come through that one once again here. So one, two, three, da, four, five, that would be six. Round. Back to the middle soul. It's funny, I could like kind of treat that almost as like a palindrome where it goes back through all those same tricks but backwards. I don't know though, I feel like I feel like there's not enough there there just yet. Let me see what you guys are saying here. Um, thanks for the podpoy info. Love all your videos, man. Learn fan four because of you. Hey, I'm glad to hear that. Fantastic four is a lot of fun. Stefan Quijberts, I'm, I, I know that I'm butchering that, um, yeah, I, sorry, uh, hi there from the Netherlands, about isolations, they feel strange to me because it's difficult to feel, they're extremely difficult to feel, like they are not perfectly going around. Yeah, so there's two tricks that I always look for in seeing people become more intermediate level spinners, and those are um, isolations and pendulum based tricks. The reason is that these are the two types of tricks that you pick up that don't really, they require you to have a completely different feel for how you are spinning your poi. Um, and it requires that the movement of the poi become much more of a marriage. Your hands don't get to uh, kind of be in the driver's seat the entire time. They have to work with the poi in order to create those moves. So yeah, isolations are one of those tricks that take a while. Um, but, you know, the practice does pay off. Absolutely. Um, Igor IP says, I missed the start of the stream. You, you create a combo for us now? Yeah, I'm, I'm writing the combo as I'm talking with you guys here. Um, so, yeah. I hope you guys are enjoying this. I know it's a little bit uh, disjointed here. Also, too, if any of you guys want to uh, help support me and support the channel, uh, pretty please help me out by using that uh, super chat function. Um, it's that little square with the dollar sign inside of it. If you've got like a couple dollars that you can send uh, the channel's way, that is awesome. It really helps me out. It helps the channel out. Uh, but no pressure there, yeah? Cool. I'm going to go back to writing. So... I'm not going to lie. I... Uh, do I want the skull chaser? Do I not want the skull chaser? So where we are right now is here, up, out, back, out. Another soul. Where's your day? Uh, I could just go straight to the skull chaser, but that feels really weird too. I think I need the skull there. Either that or at the back. No, I, I think I need the stall there no matter what I'm going to do. I could always do the snake going the other way. But that's, that, that direction for a snake is really uncomfortable for me. That's, that is not my dominant direction of spin. Yeah, I do like the idea of sneaking out around doing a pirouette and then doing a nevisole again. Yeah, that, that, that seems really fun to me. Um, what to do with that? I, I kind of want to throw in something that involves pendulums now, because um, I didn't get to do a pendulum-based combo with the video that I did this past week, unfortunately, because um, I ran out of time writing that video. But I, I, isolations and pendulums would be really fun to how, 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 up and around, birthday, stall, stall chaser, 
pixel, and I could switch from that into this. Fine. And then, oh, there's so much I want to stick in here, but I'm, I'm limited to only six tricks. It's a challenge. Um, let's see here. Something with opposites? Yeah, maybe. Um, James McLaurie says, yes, stall chaser. Okay, you guys really want that stall chaser. Horizontal stacking, that would be also be interesting. Thanks for your tutorial on stalls. Helped immensely, says James McGlory. My pleasure, my pleasure. Tell us about the hoops and the poi wall in the house to your right as you face us. Um, tell you what, let me, let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me do a little bit more work on this combo right here, and then we can talk about what's on that wall, yeah? Uh, so you got to be saying that you want to see horizontal stacks. I suppose we do Charlie instead. Where is there an easy opportunity Oh, this could be interesting. Yeah. Boom. Boom. Yeah, that doesn't feel that, that it doesn't feel right. And I really want to keep that snake in there. Oh, decisions, decisions. This one from way back in the day, switching back and forth between the Mel and Pendulum versus Triketra. How do we get there? How do we get there? So we have isolations to linear isolations to the Nevisol, Bergette, Stall, Stall Chaser, and we get a snake. Actually, so we do Bergette and what if instead of the stall I drop ooh, hang on. So we do the tour of and then pendulum versus tricatra, and then a stack. This is really fun. And then I can turn that in. Oh, oh, okay. Interesting. So tour of and ooh, coming across, I drop into pendulum versus tricatra, and then I can in the middle here. And then, boom, 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 boom. That could be fun. Okay, so we got isolation. Go up, and we go boom, 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 up and around. Four chote, pendulum versus tricetra. And we do this, the stack and chain it into boom, boom, back up and around. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. Let, let, me, let me see how many tricks there are buried in there right quick. So we have our isolations. We have our linear isolations. We have the Nevisol, today. so we're up to three already, four, Five, six, and then uh, finish it off. With, oh, can't finish it off with a spiral wrap. Is the only problem because that would take up to seven. Isolation, linear iso, another soul. Where's your day? Pendulum versus triketra. Now, actually, this isn't really a stall chaser per se. I don't think this really needs to count. Boom, boom, and back around. Okay. So I think I can justify that then. In which case, we've got one, two, three. Four, 
five. Six tricks in that combo. All right, what do you guys think? Am I cheating by not uh, by not counting this as a skull chaser? Because it uses a lot of the same skills, um, but it's not explicitly laid out in the skull chaser one minute tutorial. So that is interesting. That is interesting. Am I cheating, or are you guys liking this? Let me know. Let me know. Um, boom. Peregrine Church says, that chaining was really cool. Great. I'm glad to hear it. And Igro IP says, cool. Uh, excellent. I'm glad that you guys are enjoying that one. Um, yeah. Basil No Name says, could you recommend some early intermediate tricks that are quite fast to learn? Some that may work as a kick to move on. Um, yeah, actually, so, there's a bunch of stuff, so, start training, like, doing reels around different points of your body to start working on, on uh, body tracing. Like, this doesn't take any skills that you don't already have at this point, it's just a matter of getting comfortable with all of them. And if you get to have them down good, you can start, like, moving around your hands to different spots around your, whew, good morning, around your body, and that'll help you, because body tracers look really complicated, and like they're, they're less complicated than you think they are. Um, play around with all of these different spots for body tracers and see what comes out of it, yeah? Um, that, that would be my recommendation for an intermediate trick that would uh, that, that, that would be fairly easy for you to pick up. Oh, and it appears my lady is home from work. Yeah, hi. How you doing? Well, I, I'm doing a live stream right before you. Oh, hi, Internet. This is my girlfriend, Lydia. What's up, guys? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I should be... I was planning on only doing this for like an hour, so it would be like another 20 minutes. Is that cool? Yeah, I'm going to say I'm going to do I don't. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Do, it, do, do the people on the internet's mind having uh, Lydia clicking behind me here? Uh, Tanner says, you mentioned having a tough time last week, and I hope things are going better for you. Watching this is very inspiring. I hope you realize you appreciate it. Absolutely. I do indeed realize that, yeah. Um, last weekend was tough due to a lot of things that were like not in my control and just yeah, a, a bunch of things kind of stacked up together, but you know, I'm, I'm doing just fine. Thank you, thank you for checking in though. Um, Excellent No Name says, oh, that's actually a thing I think I need to do, thanks. Uh, you're welcome. Oh, um, somebody asked a little while ago about the prop wall, so let me guide you guys through that. Um, so I actually did a video on this. If you do a like search on uh, YouTube for how to make a prop wall. Uh, I have an entire video about how this is put together. The short answer is, is that we basically mounted pegboard to the wall and then got a whole bunch of uh, pegboard attachments. So like this basket here um, hooks into the pegboard in such a way that, and like, and the benefits of this are that we can move different around the pegboard wherever we need them to be and um, change the layout of it depending upon what we need. Um, so right now the staffs live higher. We've got this whole shelf of toy and we have so many hoops. We need to get rid of some hoops. And admittedly we need to get rid of some toy too. We need, we need to get rid of those but do hoops we? Of toy. I mean, I, I would rather have the things that we use often be accessible rather than going on Yeah. Anyhow. Cool. So Stefan Hubert says, cheating, man, you're the pro. Okay, cool. I wouldn't say that one move is cheating. What was that move called, though, the one you transitioned to after horizontal stacking? Um, it doesn't have a name is the thing. Like, it, it has some pieces that are kind of similar to stall chasers, but it's not actually a stall chaser. Um, I think that in the course of doing the video, 
I would be more or less just like giving a breakdown on how it's performed. So, um, yeah, I think that, uh, I, th I think I can get away without calling that um, stall chasers. If for no other reason than the one minute tutorial on stall chasers um, doesn't include that move. So I, I, I think I can get away with it. I think I can get away with it. Um, Stefan Hubert says, loved it, excellent. Uh, James McGlory says, so the mirrors, they help in practice. Absolutely they do. Um, so we actually normally have a coffee table that sits like right here in our living room. And the reason being that, this, oh, I'm sorry, can, uh, despite the fact that we have all this crap piled up against the mirrors, the mirrors are hugely helpful for practicing. And we use them on a not infrequent basis. Um, unfortunately, there's not a lot of room to move around in here, but there's enough room to just like sit in front of the mirror and practice stuff. So yes, I highly recommend mirrors if you can pull it off. Uh, Peregrine Church says, awesome, I love to learn how to perform it. Cool. Uh, all right, let me roll through it one more time just so I hold on to it, and then you guys can be on the lookout for that video to drop in two weeks, and then we can just turn over the rest of this live stream to uh, uh, to Q and A, if you guys want. So, combo as it is right now is starting out with an isolation, go to passe, and boom, boom, boom to the nevisol, go around in the torchette, and then drop into pendulum versus Petra, and. No, it's the Mel, that's what we're doing too. The Mel, and that kind of chasing move, down and around, back to the Nevisol, finish it up with Spiral Wrap. Let me do that again and not suck at it, yeah? So, isolation, boom, 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 and how in out, through the Nevisol, da da da. Versus Petra, stacking, Ugh. chaining, down and round, into the nose sole, into a spiral wrap. Okay, one more time. So, what, this time for the win, right? Isolation, coupe, coupe de passe, and we pop out and out. To the Nevisol, Torjante, and dropping into Pendulum versus Petra. That was ugly as sin, but it's okay. And doing the horizontal stack, and the chase move, and drop down, back into the Nevisol, and to the Spell Rack. Cool, I think I got it. Alright, kids. So, Lay them questions down on me, then I'm here for another, like, 15 minutes. So uh, let me know what it is you guys are curious about, uh, what you want to learn about, uh, things, th things that I can tell you about, whatever topics come to mind. There's nothing off limits. Uh, so let, let, let me have it, then. Uh, James McClory says, La <laughs> LMFAO, or LMAO, the cats make you improvise. Yes, yes, they do. <laughs> Absolutely, they make me improvise every, every, every time. Uh, Igiro IP says, you perform a pirouette, I think, isolation above the head. How does it work? Sure. Um, so it doesn't work that well on the carpet. I should actually take my, my, um, my socks off to demonstrate this here. But, um, so essentially, the idea here is really similar to what happens with the snake where as you're kind of spinning your poise flip time same direction, um, you almost want to like clap your hands together. So you wait until one poise is pointing up and the other poise is pointing down, and you bring your hands together, right? It's the same thing that you want to do at the start of a snake going out and around, yeah? So hands go together and then back apart. Now the difference is, is that when that happens, um, I pick up my right leg and use that to carry myself around, yeah? Um, this is actually like a move that uh, both uh, Thomas Nevisol and uh, Nikki Evers are, are, are famous for using a lot. So again, I wait till my right hand point is pointing up and my left hand point is pointing down, pop them together, 
take the pyramid around, and I, you know, I just wind up back where I started. One of the tricks to this is you want to make sure that the points stay on the same side of your body, so they're always closer to your audience than they are to you as they go around. Yeah. So yeah, good question. Uh, Tanner Noakes says, I saw the interview in which you mentioned mastery by George Leonard. In hindsight, do you ever question your decision to master Poi? Um, no. No, I don't. Um, I question sometimes my decision to do Poi full-time, but I don't ever question my decision to master Poi. Um, if for no other reason than learning to master Poi taught me so much about how to discipline myself that it has carried over into so many other parts of my life from, you know, how I approach running my YouTube channel. You know, there, there's very, very few other flow artists out there that are able to generate as much content as I do. And it's, there's nothing special about me in that regard, aside from the fact that I just learned how to discipline myself in that way and make sure that I was always producing something. Um, and that's something that I very much like that I learned as in the course of, uh, of going through that process of mastering poi. The beautiful thing about mastering anything is that it gives you the tools that you need to master other things too. Like you'll find that those same skills transfer across to a lot of different things. So um, TLDR, no, I don't ever question my decision to master poi, but pursuing poi full time as a business I question pretty frequently. <laughs> Yeah, big question though. Kurt Hobbs, ever consider learning slash teaching how to use rope dart? I actually used to do rope dart a lot back like nine or ten years ago. I imagine it would be a smooth transition from Poi. Yeah, I mean, the way I did rope dart kind of felt as though it was a long Poi, um, a long and slower Poi, and so there were some things that you could do with it that were a lot harder to do with Poi, but Ultimately, it wasn't enough of a challenge to keep me going. Um, and I know that there are rope dart artists out there who really, really get into the depths of thinking about momentum and like not work and all that. And I think that would be fun to go into. But um, the problem that I have now in pursuing poi the way I have is that now whenever I think about pursuing other things, there's always this thing that goes off in the back of my head saying, you know, oh, this is going to take time away from Poi. So rope dart is not intriguing enough to me to take time away from Poi just yet, but maybe in the future. Good question, though. Thank you, Kurt. Uh, Peregrine Church says, when I do that clapping hands together thing, the Poi just stall out and lose momentum. So it's not actually a stall is the trick to it. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to describe this, but basically you want to bring your hands together in such a way that when the hands come together, they've moved past the poi head. So the poi, the, the poi are not actually stalling at that point. They're still turning. Um, you, you, you bring your hands in. If, if, like, imagine that you were going to stall them and then bring your hands in just like a half a second after when the stall would be, and that's the better zone for you. That's, that, that's where you want to go with that. Um, Stefan, actually, let me let me demonstrate that better better than me describing it, right? So, let's say for the sake of argument that you wanted to stall your point together, in which case it'd just be a simple matter of boom and then bringing them back out, right? Whereas if I wanted to go into a snake, um, do you see how I'm doing that just like a hair of a second later? So if I stall them, I'm trying to get them along that vertical line, right? And if I'm trying to snake them. I'm trying to get them out to the sides by the time my hands come together, yeah? So you're bringing your hands together just slightly later than you would if you were trying to stall them, yeah? Um, so it can be a little difficult to feel the nuance of that, but that's ultimately where you're trying to get to. Yeah. Um, Stefan Quibert says spiral wraps, hand palms on each other or the backs of your hands or both. Um, I do what I call the turtle. Uh, I have my palms uh, both pointing the same way and my thumbs sticking out to either side of, uh, of, of my hands, yeah. Um, Igoro IP says, thank you a lot. I'll try it. Fantastic. Peregrine Church says, that helps. Thank you. I'm glad to hear it. Cool. Uh, yeah, keep throwing me your questions, guys. I'll, I'll be on here for another 10 minutes. Um, and yeah, if anybody wants to help out me and the channel by using that super chat function, that's that uh, square button with the dollar sign in it. Um, 
the donations that I get from people here on YouTube and on my Patreon are the things that help keep my channel going. So if you've got, you know, a dollar or two that you can spare, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Kurt Hobbs says, what moves do you consider to be the flashiest, the biggest crowd pleasers? I will give you my top three biggest crowd pleasers right now. And bear in mind, these might become video later on down the road. Because now that I've said that out loud, I'm like, wait, that'd be a great idea for the video. Um, so, it's such a cliche, but like, doing the back bend buzzsaw, flow artists hate it. Audiences love it. Um, and both are right. Um, the, the biggest reason why that's a thing that appeals to people is that nine times out of ten as you're spinning around and everything, you don't change your levels, you know? You don't go low, you don't go high, you don't give people something dynamic to check in on as you're doing this. So when you do that back in buzzsaw, it forces you to change your levels. It forces you to go into a place where you're doing something for the audience that tells them that something different is happening. That's why they go for that. Um, and of course, like just on a tech level, it's a total bullshit trick. Nobody, like, nobody in the flow arts cares, but audiences love it. So it's a crowd pleaser. Um, crowd pleaser number two. Is orbitals. This one should need no explanation as well. It's the boy moving very, very fast between your arms. Um, and it's something that is very unexpected to people. It's something that, in seeing it happen, this changes their perception of what boy can do. Um, the biggest part of it, really, is just that it's the boy moving so fast. Um, and one of the things that I love to do to finish off the performance is going into horrible from reverse. And you can blow out your boy from here, yeah? Um, this is actually something that I picked up from old Yuta videos, and it is a fantastic way to punctuate the end of the performance. Um, you want to do this off of a reverse orbital um, because it actually is moving that foil along the top line back towards you, so you're getting the maximum possible impact out of that breath, yeah? Um, you don't get as much impact if, say, you were doing a forwards orbital because in order to do that, you have to raise it up and blow it out from the bottom. So, off of the reverse orbital, boom, blow it out, looks cool as ball, right? Uh, number three, my, my third favorite crowd pleaser, is static versus tripetra, yeah? Um, it works for the same reason that the orbital does, that it's super fast, um, and also, it's, it's one of these tricks that, because it's being done so fast, um, your, the, the persistence of vision effect will kick in for your audience if it's either LED or fire, and they will see the tricetra. They will see the pattern that you're trying to create. Nine times out of ten, they cannot see the pattern that you're creating with your poi, and static versus tricetra almost always goes fast enough that they can. So that, that, those would be my top three biggest crowd pleasers, yeah? Oh, awesome. Warren Woodruff, thank you so much for the $10. I really appreciate that. Woo! Yay! Thank you for helping to keep the channel alive, Warren. We love you. Um, yay! Cool. Uh, Hugo Carrara says, Hello, Drex. Greetings from Argentina. Hola. Que pasa? Uh, always grateful for your tutorials. They are really helpful. I have a problem with learning the extension versus Triketra. Any advice? Uh, I have trouble managing the hand where I do the extension. And yeah, I can, let me, let me real briefly uh, jump into that for you. Um, so I don't know if you've seen my video on uh, doing polyrhythm hybrids, where I have this technique for learning static versus triketra, where essentially um, you're starting from a, uh, a together time opposites flower, or not flower, but your, your hands are basically in reverse butterfly. And one goes up and over, and then when it gets to the other side, the other point kind of droops and gets dragged along the bottom, right? You can use this exact same technique for learning how to do eccentric versus triketra. Let's say you start off with a, uh, a, a, a butterfly where they're coming down through the middle together. Keep your hands together and pop them both up and over together, yeah? So you want to have both of them reach the top of the arc at the same time 
and then when you get over to the other side of your body, one of them, and usually, so if I'm going from the left side of my body to the right side of my body, it's going to be my left hand toy that stops moving, and I'm going to drag it across as the other toy keeps rotating, yeah? So basically you want both to go up and drag, 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 yeah? And then you want to work on speeding this, oops, and then you want to work on speeding this up. And eventually, you will get the Mercedes, or try to catch your business extension, yeah? Um, the way I originally learned this was actually to break it up into segments where you're moving your hands back and forth along a single line, which is also good, but I think that the pop up and drag across, pop up and drag across method will work just a little bit faster. If that's what you're looking for. Cool. Um, Igro IP says, one more trick, please. Can you show behind the head spiral wrap? I wish I could, but I can't do it. <laughs> um, there are some tricks that you just never, I, I, I've never put much effort into this. I think it would go from like a windmill to here, and oh, oh my god, I did it. Holy crap. Um, let's see if I can do it going the other way. Oh. Okay, so apparently I can do it. Oh my god, that feels awful. Um, so it's going to work just like a spiral wrap in front of you, except of course you can't see anything. Um, basically you're looking to get the poi wrapped around your hands and then do the snap back the other direction. The trick is keeping your planes oriented properly. I have no idea how I'm doing it right now, so I'm just going to show you it from behind and say good luck. So from here, boom, and from here. Boom, from here, boom, oh, that feels terrible, boom, okay, I really, truly hope that looks better than it feels, because it feels like it's just an absolute massive slop behind my head. <laughs> Thanks for the question, though, Igor Uh James McGlory, don't read, okay, um, let's see here, Warren Root Woodruff, your live chats are awesome. Cool. I'm I'm glad that you are a fan of them. I wanna I wanna keep on. I, I wanna do these more regularly. Um, lots of people have asked me to do them in the evening, but the problem is that um, it's a lot harder for me to do them in the evening. So I think maybe every Friday, every other Friday afternoon might be a good approach for me. We'll we'll see if I can make this regular. I would like to. I would like to. Uh, Tanner Nogues says, "How did you know that poi was the thing for you to master?" I didn't. Um, I mean, I, I didn't. Uh, it was a completely arbitrary decision. Um, so, like, in my teen years, I was a comic book illustrator, and I thought that that was what I was put on this earth to do. And then in my early 20s, I got into music, and I convinced myself, oh, this is the, uh, uh, the thing I was put on this earth to do. And both of those things didn't work out. Poi was as arbitrary as it could possibly be. And I think one thing that's very different about me than most other Poi artists out there is I've had a bunch of other creative careers before this one kind of fizzle out. So I don't have any kind of idea in my head about like, you know, this is the thing that I was put here to do. It's, it is a thing that I can do that there is a demand for out there that other people feel enriched by. Um, if I went back and talked to 20 year old me and said, you know, in, you know, 18 years, you're going to have a following on YouTube, which YouTube didn't exist at the time. Um, but like told my 20 year old self what my career was going to be at 38. Um, no, <laughs> there's, there, come on now. <laughs> there's no way there, there, there's, there's no way. Number one, the 20 year old me would buy it. Number two, 20-year-old me would just say, that sounds like a terrible idea. Why would you do that? Um, and also, too, that, like, I, I think I had to go through that process of having some creative careers that fell apart to really show me that it's it, it wasn't necessarily all about me and what I wanted, that in a lot of cases, it's about what the world needs from you, what you can provide to other people. Um, 
And I think there's just as much fulfillment to be found in that as there is, say, like, you know, drawing comic books is my mission in life kind of thing, you know? Um, and I think that's something that a lot of artists lack and have a hard, a hard time learning that lesson is to realize how much of that journey is finding a way to be of service to others and not just to yourself. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I need to finish reading that question. <laughs> You've mentioned being a musician and working in social services. I imagine you could have mastered anything. How does one commit to one thing? <laughs> I think the answer was kind of in there. Um, it was honestly just an experiment. Um, when I read Mastery, I... You know, in reading it, it was different from what my expectations were for how one gets to be good at something. I thought that it was all about talent. Um, and so it was like, in my head, it was kind of a semi ridiculous idea. It's like, what doesn't take talent to get good at something that can't possibly be right. And so, you know, I had just started spinning poi and I never intended for poi to be anything other than a silly little hobby that I did in my spare time. Like where I am right now, this was not the plan. It, it is something that found me, not the other way around. Um, so I guess in my mind at the time, it made sense that I'm all like, well, this is kind of a silly idea, and I just picked up this silly hobby, so I'm going to put these two things together, you know? Like, okay, sure, George Leonard, if you say this is how people master things, pshaw, let's, let's, let's give it a try, let's give it a try, you know? Um, so yeah, I, I, I hope that helps. But it should also be said that since then, I've used those same techniques to apply to a lot of different things. Like, I've used them to become, you know, a better videographer. I've used them to become a better editor. I've used them to become a better business person. Um, really what I got out of that is not necessarily that I mastered Poi, although that was awesome, but that it taught me that I could apply those same techniques to other things in my life too. So, you know, yeah, mastering Poi seems kind of arbitrary, but mastering content creation, now that's, that's actually something that is not a bad thing to spend time working on, right? So, and not that it's a bad thing to spend time working on Koi either, but it's a lot more practical to work on content creation, right? Okay, so while I was reading off that novel to you guys, um, Tanner, good one. After 51 years, I haven't learned to laugh, laugh out loud. Uh, Stefan Hubert says, yeah, the best spinning is in flow, no thinking. I, I think all the time when I spin, but I really respect people that can just like purely empty their heads when they're spinning. The one thing that I do that actually I, I do manage to empty my head while I do is Tai Chi, um, which I've now made that like kind of a permanent ritual for myself in the morning doing the 24 form because there's no way that I can be preoccupied with something or have my mind working on something else as I'm doing Tai Chi. If I do that, I will mess up and I will lose my place in the form. So I found that Tai Chi is a great way for me first thing in the morning to clear my head and get ready for the day. Um, James McGlory says, looks great if it feels terrible. I'm assuming that you mean that about the behind the head spiral wrap, and I'm great. I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful to hear about that. Your IP says, sorry for that, and big thanks. You're, you're more than welcome. You're more than welcome. Uh, Peregrine Church says, it actually looked really good. <laughs> I'm so glad to hear that. Stefan Hubert says, this is a perfect time. It is evening here. Cool. Um, James says, right, Stefan. Your IP says, for me, it's after midnight, but it's okay. Wow. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting kind of old. I, I don't, I try not to uh, be awake after midnight anymore, but with, with some rare exceptions, but I, I always pay for it the next morning. Uh, Kurt Hobbs, when you were learning how to spin poi, who were the poi artists you looked up to slash learned from the most? Um, so uh, clearly um, Nick Woolsey was a big one. My timing was actually really perfect to get into um, uh, to get into uh, poi spinning because Nick had just started posting um, his adventures in poi series on YouTube. I think he was like two or three videos deep on that one. And um, I'd kind of run out of things to learn from the local poi spinners in Denver where I was living. And having those tutorial videos to go to was amazing. Um, actually, I guess actually technically the first poi spinner I really looked up to was this dude, um, Moloch, who 
was one of the spinners in the Denver area and his friend Kyle. They were kind of like my first like kind of template of, you know, that's what a good koi spinner looks like and everything. And those were the guys that I was chasing for the first year that I was spinning. Um, and then Nick, um, both because I thought he was a beautiful spinner and also because he was a fantastic teacher. Um, you know, I really took, like, my tech blogs took a lot from what he was doing in that, you know, I, in watching him, I felt like I knew him. I felt like he was my friend. And that was something that I wanted to be able to create with my audience as well. So I, I took a lot of what Nick was doing, talking to the camera, um, and applied that to my own situation. It, it took me a little while to find my own voice and find my own kind of spin on it. Eh, pun intended. Um, but yeah, Nick was definitely a big one. Um, Alien John. Alien John was a huge influence on me those first two years. Um, and it was funny because, so as soon as Nick finished up his Adventures in Poi series, I kind of was in this place where I'm like, okay, so that's all there is to learn, right? And um, I... Like, I think it was the next week after I learned the last trick in that series. Um, Alien John and um, Zan came out with the Arizona Poi Spinning Transmission video, which, in my mind, is still the greatest tech Poi video that has ever been made. It was the first one that showed, like, you know, computer-simulated Poi trails in real time. Um, just an incredible video. Incredible video. And all of a sudden, it was like, oh, now that's what good poi spinning looks like. And um, for those who have, I don't know how many people still know who Alien John is out there, but um, Alien John was and is, I think, in my mind, just like the template of the perfect poi celebrity. He is incredibly kind. He's very giving of his time. You know, I was like a no-name poi spinner who at that point, I would moved to D.C. and I started emailing him being like, hey, I want to learn all the poi secrets and everything. Um, and he was incredibly generous. He was very, very nice to me. Um, and we have some like late night uh, Google chat sessions where he would like kind of brain dump on me. And I had so long to go before that would start making sense to me. Like it was years before a lot of the stuff that he was saying finally, like I, I was at a point where I was like, oh, that's what he was getting at, you know? Um, Mad respect for that man. I wish I wish he was still uh, more of a part of the flow art scene, but he's he's following his own bliss right now, and, and you know God love him for it. Um, Christian Medina was really the first guy to show me something with poi that like broke my brain, and I'm like I have no idea how that works. What he showed me were some inversions in atomics, um, and to this day I don't think I've ever met a sweeter man in the flow arts. Um, he's just one of the nicest human beings I've ever met in my life. Um, good friend and uh, just absolutely adore the guy. Uh, really sweet man. And Ronan was a big one. Um, and then also in those first couple years that I was making videos, um, uh, Poi Boy from Israel was a big influence. Um, again, really nice guy, really, really talented guy. And, you know, for a little while, he and I were kind of bouncing ideas back and forth to each other where I'd do a video and say, hey, here's a whole bunch of ideas that I have. And then he would do a video where he'd be like, hey, I'm going to take all these ideas that Drex put in and I'm going to put my own spin on them. And I'd look at them and be like, oh, wow, that's awesome. Um, so, yeah, I, I honestly could go on for hours about the people who've inspired me over the years. But I would say that where I am right now is um, a lot of pieces of Alien John and Ronan. Um, and I've, I've been saying for years now that if you're really – really well acquainted with Ronan and Alien John. You'll never see me do anything that surprises you. Maybe some gunslinger stuff, but um, other than that, all of the anti-Brit stuff I get from, from the two of them, um, all the techier stuff I get from Alien John, and like the kind of slower, more deliberate spinning is something I get from Ronan, and also like just the form that I'm trying to hit, because Ronan's spinning is just gorgeous. He, he has this sense that's really similar to Yuda and Thomas Nevisol, where the shapes that he creates are just so flawless that watching him is like watching a moving work of art. It's, it's, it's amazing. Cool. All right. I, I will get back to the other questions because I went way deep into that one. Um, cool. So let me see where I left off here. 
Kurt Hobbs. Okay, you're 38. I don't believe. Well, I'm gonna be 38 in June, but um, yeah, I guess once I got over the age of 30, I just kind of like switched around my thinking on it to like you know, oh well, I'm 25 until I get to the next year. And at this point, I'm just kind of like, okay, I'm going to age gracefully. It's just whatever the next year is, and I'll, I'll get myself used to it as soon as possible. So technically, I'm, 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 I'm still 37, but I'll be 38 in June, and I'm just getting myself used to it. I just think of myself that way. Uh, Tanner Noakes says, thank you for your thoughtful answer. You are so welcome. Oh, wow, I had a whole bunch of stuff pop up while I was telling those stories. O'Neill 2000 says, thanks for the, insp the inspiration, a reminder to serve others. I sure need to practice my poi. So do I. T. Castle says, hi, hi, I'm at work, but hey, who needs to work when Drex is live streaming? Well, I mean, technically I'm working right now, but uh, my, my work is slightly different. Yeah? Um, Bigger IP says, I also learned poise spinning from you and Nick. Oh, that's so good to hear. So um, it's funny because, like, people talk about um, imposter syndrome a lot, and it wasn't until a year or two ago that... I thought of myself as being a poi educator in the same vein as Nick. I always thought of what Nick was doing as being this just like Greek statue that you couldn't touch. And then I started seeing people on poi chat talking about my tutorials and Nick's tutorials in the same sentence. And then I had this like, oh, holy shit moment. I'm like, oh, okay. So what I'm doing is actually important to a whole lot of people. That's good to, that's, that's good to know. Yeah. Um, Stefan Hubert says, surprising answer. I thought you mostly don't think while spinning. Oh, I think all the time. I only see you thinking in the live streams, but not so in the tutorials. I guess I just think very quickly then. Um, yeah, and also, like, when you see the tutorials, there's a lot of editing that goes into that. There's a lot of stuff that you don't get to see. There's a lot of stuff that, uh, that winds up on the cutting room floor. And... Yeah, when, when you're seeing the live streams, you're seeing a much more unvarnished picture of what uh, of what this process looks like. So there's always thinking going on. It's just a question of whether I'm editing it out or not, right? Um, T. Castle, I'm also learning a lot from Nick and from you, Drex. Excellent! The two of you are amazing, approachable, and great teachers. Thank you so much. That means a lot to me. Uh, like I said, Nick's work was really important to me in that first year that I was spinning. So hearing that I'm helping other people out in the same way that he does means quite a lot to me. It means quite a lot indeed. Um, Tanner Nogues says, you used to have profiles in Poi. Are you going to do more of those interviews? I would like to. Um, so I've mentioned this on past live streams too, but so all of my profiles in Poi interviews were kind of happy accidents in a way in that um, basically what happened was always that I was traveling somewhere and I would see somebody that I knew and respected and I thought had an interesting story so I would ask them to sit down with me for like you know 15 minutes and then you know take five minutes to take some b-roll of them spinning and that's what would eventually get posted as profiles and poi and the two things happened the first is that like I kind of ran through a lot of the people that I really wanted to talk to um, and number two is that I started to realize that the commitment was way bigger than I was making it out to seem. Like, for both Nick Woolsey's interview as well as Zan's interview, those interviews went for over an hour. And there was a lot that had to get trimmed out to get those uh, interviews down to only like 10 minutes, I think each of them is. And some of those things that I had to cut out, like, really hurt, you know? It was one of those things, it's like, how can I possibly cut this out? But at the same time, it's like, you know... You, you gotta you gotta create the content for the audience and there's a very small number of people that are gonna sit through an hour long interview and a lot more that will sit through a ten minute highlight reel. So whenever possible I tried to like pull out individual segments that I thought were really good and like kind of have them as additional content that would pop up down the line. Um, so the short answer of why they haven't happened in a while is that it's been a while since I've been to a festival where I and people that I wanted to talk to both had the time to invest in that sort of thing. There have been people in the past couple years that I've asked to interview for Profiles in Poi, and it hasn't happened either because they were too busy or I was too busy. And the, the, sh the real short answer is just that all of those Profiles in Poi interviews were kind of happy accidents, and it's gotten much harder to make those happy accidents happen ever since then. So 
Here's hoping that it can happen at some point, but um, I don't know when that's going to be because th there, there was never a plan behind doing them in the first place with this last round, so we'll see. Um, I will tell you, though, that there is a Lost interview in which Tim Goddard interviewed me, and that's, um, that never got published, <laughs> ironically enough, because um, the idea of editing my story of myself seemed really weird and I tried for a little while to find an editor who would take that on for me and there was just never anybody who came through on it so there there's an interview with me sitting around on a hard drive from like four years ago and maybe it'll see the light of day and maybe not um cool so Igor IP oh and I should I'm gonna wrap this up in the next five minutes here Igor IP says in the meantime if anybody else has a couple dollars they want to throw towards the channel I would really appreciate it because that's part of how we, uh, we, 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 we keep this alive. Um, let's see here. I live in a small city and we have a small fire spinning band of six people and because of yours and Nick's videos, I became the best poister of us with less spinning time than my other friends. Thanks for that. You are so welcome. Hope you understand what I mean. I do, I do. Um, yeah, it's always, you know, it's, it's interesting because in my experience, the people who like really excel at things, half the time is people who are really talented, and half the time it's just the people who like are really hard workers. Because when super talented people come up against their first plateau, they have no idea what to do with it because they're not used to working through their frustrations, you know. Whereas people who've had to work really hard from the start and like working really hard to get through those plateaus and everything is something that comes a lot more naturally to them. So I, I feel you. Um, James McLaurie, I'm with Stefan. I imagine that Tai Chi flow as you spun the Zen aspect of doing, not thinking. Yes, yes indeed. James McLaurie also asks, what festivals do you attend? I went to Flame Festival, and I will also be going to Equilibrium in the fall, and there's also a festival in, um, in Taiwan that I'm going to be going to this year, but I can't remember the name of it. Uh, those are the only three that I was scheduled for this year. Um, Stefan Huberts, hi James, yes, for me it is more thinking while learning, but while spinning I get in a flow, kind of meditative. Cool. Um, Kurt Hobbs, I've heard you say you enjoy a good metal song. Have you ever heard of the band In Flames? Yes, I have. They are a metal band with lots of melody, especially their song Cloud Connected. I have had Cloud Connected in my heavy metal playlist next to a bunch of my other favorites from the late 90s and early aughts, including, you know, Deftones and Rob Zombie and um, there's some Sparta in there. Um, God, yeah, there's a lot of stuff in there. But yes, I love In Flames, and especially I love Cloud Connected. Um, way back in the day, there used to be this um, website I loved that had like an RSS feed of uh, metal and hard rock music videos that they post from time to time, and I got into a lot of really good bands that way. And one of those videos that they posted was Cloud Connected, and that's how I got into In Flames. So yes, I am absolutely on that train, 100%. James McLaurie says, Stefan, right, The Funny Grandma Show. Do you think you could shout out The Funny Grandma Show? Sure, why not? Funny Grandma Show, check it out. I have no idea what it is, but it sounds like it could be funny. Yes? Um, cool, all right, so... If anybody wants to get any last minute questions here, I'm going to shut this down in a minute and a half. Um, now that I've got my choreography done and I've answered a bunch of questions. Um, yeah, uh, thank you guys all for tuning in and watching as I work through my choreo. Was it actually enjoyable to watch me write choreo? I, I, I don't have a lot of context for how interesting it is to watch somebody else work through a thing like that. So let me know if, if this was fun. Uh, Igor IP says, thanks a lot for your answers and help. Waiting for the next Top 5 Tricks video. Bye, everyone. Bye. Yep, there will be another Top 5 Tricks video coming out uh, by the end of May, actually. Um, yeah, and I can't tell you what it's on because I haven't written it yet. But, uh, yeah, you can expect that to come out in about four weeks' time. Yeah, cool. Um, so before I sign off here, um, just want to say, number one, Thank you to the friends of the channel. Uh, these are companies that have signed up to support my work and without whom I could not uh, keep my channel going. The friends of the channel are uh, Dark Monk, Amazing Lights, 
Flow Toys, Spin Balls, Spin Sconson, and Ultrapoy. Thank you one and all for, uh, for helping to make the videos on my channel possible. I would also love to thank all of my wonderful patrons on Patreon. If you guys out there want to support my channel, want to support the work that I do, help make sure that I can keep on making free videos for everyone all over the world to learn from, uh, head on over to patreon.com slash drexfactorpoy and sign up. You can sign up for as little as a dollar a month. And that literally is what pays my rent at this point. It makes it possible for me to devote all my time to, to my channel and creating videos for people out there. Um, you also get access to uh, my videos a day before they go live to the rest of the world. Um, and also sometimes I, and also I share a bunch of production information. Like you can see the process that goes into creating my videos. Um, and how I do things like color grading or setting up my apartment as a home studio um, or my camera settings and things like that. So um, I think it's a good value. For a dollar a month, you get all that. It's pretty bad. Um, so thank you one and all. Um, let me see here. Oh, a bunch of other stuff popped up. Um, James and Glory, thanks. I do Wisteria's Autumn Fires, PSG Summer Solstice, and would like to do Starwood at this Wisteria. Well, your choreo work, though that was what a practitioner needs to see. Cool. I'm, I'm glad to hear at least one person enjoyed it. Miss Jasmine in Hoop Studio. I have used many of your tutorials to figure out translating hoop skills to twin hoops. Yay! Thank you so much. You are appreciated. And I appreciate you, Miss Jasmine Hoop Studio. Um, cool. That is so good to hear. Tanner Nogues, thank you. Thoroughly enjoyed it. James McClory, thanks everybody for joining. See you next time. Fantastic. And with that, I'm going to bring this to a close. Thank you one and all for watching. And um, I will hopefully see you guys in another two weeks. Peace.